This is the uh, third uh, installment of the design series, uh, Designing a Cycle Cart. Uh, but before we get started, uh, uh, a couple of the guys on the club found this uh, club site, found this photo of a monocar. And I've never seen this one, and I think this has become my new favorite. Uh, this is the first one that actually looks like my car. <laughs> and it even kind of looks like me when I was younger. Oh, jeez. Well, anyway, I just thought that was interesting, so so I put it up on my cycle car shrine here. <laughs> so uh, okay, so let me show you something here. Uh, last night I uh, hang on here. Okay, uh, all right, we've seen this view. That's the tracing uh, with some scale measurements, and then this view is uh, same body, everything just lowered. Uh, and oh, and I did have to extend the nose a little bit because the axle's out here, so it took on a slightly different look. Just a hair longer in the nose. Jeez, and I really like this one better. I hate to see. I guess it's all right longer. I think it looks all right lower. I think it looked better a little shorter though, more like this one. I like this compact look. Um, so I'm going to lay some measurements in this here real quick and I'll get back to you and we'll see, see how it scales out now that it's lower. Little by little, I'm getting closer here. Now uh, this is a recap, so we've already seen this one. And then uh, this is the same, in essence, same size body but lowered with this uh, chassis lowering idea. And then uh, you'd seen this one where, uh, how I was thinking to put it together. But now I've come up with this drawing right here. All right, so this is the slightly longer version that I wasn't all that wild about at first, but now I'm thinking it's starting to look pretty good. Uh, I've done a, a fair amount of refinement to this drawing, uh, and uh, I laid in every dimension I could figure out, tried to get everything uh, to... It be in line with uh, you know this full size drawing here so uh, I could do a larger larger drawing of this which I probably will uh, when you draw it larger you can just make get the detail better but this is a pretty good representation of what I'm gonna build uh, I might change it a little bit and then this tends to be a guideline because kind of as you're going along building you know you'll make changes nothing drastic but you know okay so let's look a little closer here I landed on a 64 inch wheelbase which I'm happy with that's fine um, here I have the axle bottom of the axle at 6 inches and then here's the axle height at 11 so now this frame corresponds with that that gives us six and a half to the bottom of the frame. This is a one by three, O six two thin wall rectangle tubing. Now this taper here, where it tapers to two inches, uh, starts at twenty four inches. I may not do that. I don't know. We'll see, because that's what it, this is. What it's going to look like when it's finished. So the the spring is going to come right out of the side of the radiator shell and the there'll have to probably be a notch here at the bottom of the radiator shroud for the axle movement. Um, we ended up with 29 instead of 28, which is okay. This is a taller car anyway um, than the monocar. Um, I calculated this to be three and a half inches the uh, radiator shroud and that gives us 37 here, which is good because that's 37 total length, so That'll still work. The um, 27, that's good. Needed to get in and out. Got a little cushion here. We're good at 32 back here. And then here's where there would theoretically be a seam or a joint for this rear cover to come off. Uh, right now, uh, it's uh, 102 inches overall. So that's not too big. I could make it more compact if I wanted, uh, you know, I could keep working this drawing and scrunch this thing up and make it 90 inches long, but then I'd be sitting in there with my knees up in the air, I suspect. Um, 
here's how I would overlap the frame, at least that's my concept now, and then uh, I measured the motor on the monocar, so to capture the motor with the rear of the frame, I need 19 inches from the center line of the axle to the back of the frame, and that axle's at 11 inches. Um, the scale's at 9, which I like the looks of. Um, so this part of the frame is 10 inches off the ground, which really works with the way this body steps up. And then I'm using the 17-inch rims uh, with a 275-17 tire with a street tread. That's how I get to the 22. Uh, you can use smaller tires and get a smaller diameter. Um, so it really doesn't matter that much. All right, so uh, this is what I was talking about, a more refined drawing. I mean, I could, geez, I could build the thing from this. Uh, but I haven't done a plan view, a top view yet, uh, which will show where the steering linkage will come out and uh, a number of other things. Uh, exact placement of the pedals and the seat back and the uh, rear axle and the engine uh, crankshaft. So that comes from a top view. Uh, which I'll probably do some smaller versions like I did on this hardboard here. So, okay, we'll uh, continue on. Okay, so this is my first foray into uh, drawing a plan view or a top view. And uh, you can see where I've kind of blocked out, got a couple of little reference lines here. Uh, you know, this is the center of the frame. And then this is, uh, you know, since I'm, I have this drawing up here in front of me, because I'm going to, you know, use these measurements to lay out crosshairs here. So, uh, right off the bat, I know I'm at 64 wheelbase, so that's what I laid out, 64 here to here. And then um, I shoot for a 38-inch uh, track, now, you know, uh, or at least 38 inches center of tire, center of tire. And uh, that's in the front, and then in the rear, it's 36, center tire, center tire. That's how I do it anyway. So that's the basic plan shape right there, uh, you know, wheelbase and, and width of tires. So, I, you know, be, with this drawing, uh, I can lay in where the radiator is, where the cowl starts, where the seat is, uh, where the axle is, uh, where the uh, crankshaft of the motor would be, the end of the frame. So uh, I'll also be able to show uh, the uh, tie rods and the uh, wishbones. So man, I'll get a lot from this uh, from a plan view. So uh, that's why I have it right up here in front of me because uh, a lot of the work I've already done scaling, I can now transfer to this drawing. Uh, so uh, I'm going to continue on with this, and I'll show you in a few minutes after I get it a little further along. All right. I've done a little bit more work on this uh, plan view here, top view of the chassis. <clears throat> so I'm trying to get the shape of the body right. This is the first lines I've drawn. I've scaled out, uh, you know, here's the front of the radiator. Here's the cowl. There's the back of the seat and then the end. Turns out that it was 100 and, 105 overall. I had 102, but... I didn't do the math right. <laughs> so, since I don't have a blueprint of this, I, you know, this is so far the only view I have from above of what this thing looks like proportion-wise. And then I have this this one here. I gotta get on the internet and see if I can find a top view. That's how I found this. I was searching for a view from above. And just looking at this, and looking at this, I'd say that looks a little narrow, maybe. I don't know. Okay, and then this point here. It probably looks a little better to here instead of clear out to here. Um, and then it looks like it's pretty much straight till it gets to the cow. Then it starts to curve. So, that's pretty much what I did. But I got to do some more research because just at first blush looking at this, I don't know, it's, I don't think it's quite right yet. 
All right, I'll keep working on them. i got to find a better up above view. <clears throat> okay, I did a little research, went online, uh, found some other images. You know, I've, I've already found these, these two. Uh, so I uh, found this blueprint. This is of an Austin 7, but uh, it's close enough. This, this is actually a pretty good uh, drawing. really shows that shape pretty good. So, um, and then I also come across this other one, which shows on the real car how the frame is below the hub, line of the hub. So I thought that was kind of cool. Um, so uh, then I took uh, that drawing and I blew it up with my copy machine to 105 inches. And then I... I blew up the front view here to 38, which is what I was shooting for. So that put the car at 30, the height of the radiator, and 14 it at the radiator, which is kind of the number I picked just kind of out of the blue. Um, but let's see, if I, if I look at this, let's see here, let me get this where we can see it. Well, I guess that's pretty close. Yeah, here's the, the radiator as I've proposed it, and here's the version in scale, so I guess, you know, they're pretty darn close. I don't know, I just thought this didn't look right. And, uh, okay, so let's do some comparison here, a little side by side. All right, so right here, let's see. I think it looks a little wider here. All right, so I need to work on that line. It's subtle stuff, but it is straight to here, but then this isn't just a continuous arc. It kind of flattens out a little bit. And then the curve continues. See how mine is kind of straight. So I've got to work that to have a little more arc. And then if you notice the nose here, or the tail that's sharper so I got to refine that and uh, you know location of the seat back relative to the you know the width of the wheels here that's not too bad yeah this appears it should be a little further forward this is the top of the seat and you know it angles down so it's you know the bottoms maybe here all right, well, I'm going to work on the drawing a little bit now that I have this. I love the internet. It just only took me a few minutes to find this. So, okay, I'll work on this and get back to you. I realized that when I went down and used my copy machine, I blew this up to uh, one inch to the foot, but then my other drawing here, I'm actually drawing in one and a half inches to the foot. So, uh... Because I was going to put this on my light box and set this over it, and trace it. Crap, I got to go down to the shop again and get the scale right. Got to blow this up to one and a half to the foot so I can use it with this drawing. Uh, but anyway, I'm trying to just wing it here, so to speak. So I've got my marking uh, ruler here, flexible ruler is what I'm calling it. And uh, I don't know if you can tell, but... I think that shape is pretty darn close. Um, plus earlier when I was telling you that this scale right when I was holding this one up against it, well I was looking at it as one inch to the foot so now this is wider and uh, boy it's already looking better. Uh, so when I drew this at one and a half to the foot now it's starting to look the shape can see that it's starting to get there and uh, I'm pretty confident I can get this to look right just a little bit of messing with it so you know I made a mistake but I might be able to recover or I can run down and use the copy machine all right I drew the line with the flexible rule doesn't look too bad then you know I have to get the same shape here on the other side so I very carefully slid it up without moving it or bending it onto another piece of paper. Then I'll 
and I mark the line. Then I'll cut that real carefully with the scissors. Then I flip it over, and that'll be my template for the other side. And if I was careful, it'd be an it'd be a exact match. All right, one little trick. I use the scissors and cut along the pencil line, and uh, this is uh, tracing paper, so uh, that allows me to to work it a little easier. Also, uh, there's a couple reference lines I had to make before I cut it, one at the front and the rear. And then when I lay it down on here, there's a mark right there, another one right there, that, ha that it has to touch. So I'll have to finesse this and round it off a little bit. Um, but I'll tape this down, run my pencil along the edge of the cut, and, uh, and I'll have me a pretty symmetric shape at that point. All right, I'm happy with that so far. You might think uh, that I do an awful lot of drawing and scaling and what have you. Uh, and it's all geared towards uh, doing a full size layout from the side and from the top. So you've heard me talk about that. And uh, you know, when I built the monocar, I did a drawing just like this scale. And when I was happy with the refined version, then uh, because it was one inch to the foot, I transferred it to this eight foot piece of particle board. You can see the lines there. So that is a full size drawing. I mean, and darn if that isn't exactly how the car came out. Almost to the millimeter. Uh, but the reason I do this is so that as I'm building, I can measure this. I can go up and put a tape measure to just about any part of it to refresh my memory and figure out where I should be. And, uh, you know, like I say, it was probably within an inch or two of being correct. A couple places it was less than that. So, uh, you know, when I wanted to put in this wood, I wanted to make the wood tub. So there's the wood back and there's the bottom. Well, I measured this drawing to build the tub and darn if it didn't just slip right the hell in. So. So that's, you know, so there's, I'm eventually going to do this with this car. Um, and uh, right now I'm working on the, uh, you know, the plan view of this, the top view. And on the other side of this piece of particle board is that full size drawing. So I'm going to flip this over and show you that because it ties in with the overhead view I'm doing now on paper. Here's the other side of that same board. Uh, now, the beauty of this full-size layout is that I can measure this drawing to cut the frame rails, to cut, cut the cross pieces, you know, like uh, here's a cross piece right here, and then the end of the frame. And because this frame is tapered, there's a little angle right there, so I can, I can measure it up. And then, you see how it, the, the wood's kind of burnt? Well, that's because I uh, clamped the frame right over the top of the drawing and uh, weld it clamped to this board. So if my drawing is accurate, that frame is going to be accurate. Um, and you can see how, uh, here's the axle, there's, uh, there's the pedal, uh, accelerator, throttle pedal, brake pedal. Here's the steering shaft coming in, this is how I designed the bracket. And then uh, there's uh, some lines here that represent the tie rod. So I could dr keep drawing on this, you know, here's the location of the steering wheel. So that gives me the length of the shaft. A uh, combination of this view and the side view would give me the total length. Um, and then uh, there's the seat back, the two layer seat back and the pad. And then uh, there's the uh, disc brake and the sprocket and the axle, one inch axle. And the bearings would be right here. And then I took the motor and I kind of traced around it. And then now, now I could measure the distance from the shaft to the axle, to the center of the uh, axle. And uh, it's just a nice way of doing it. 
So, in my opinion, it's well worth the effort to draw it out because I measured this thing a bunch of times when I was building to get little little measurements that I needed. So, uh, so all this drawing that I'm doing is so I can make two full-size layouts, a side view and a top view. And uh, once I have all that done, I think I'm ready to start, you know, figuring out what I need to buy to start building. So, uh, anyway, that's where I'm heading. Just wanted you to see that and understand uh, why I do, do it the way I do it. Okay, I broke down and went down to the shop and used the copy machine to blow this one up to inch and a half to the foot. Now, I've got it here on my light box. Let me flip this over. And here's the sketch that I was working on where I drew the lines. So now let's see how it measures up. Okay, so let me get this on here. Then I'll turn on the light here. Just bear with me. And let me turn off this other light. It'll help, I think. Maybe it might be too bright. Well, it's going to be hard for you to see the lines. Okay, so with the radiator is right on the money, but then it starts to go a little bit off, at least my my lines. So if you watch this this line right here, okay, so it's pretty good, but then back here is where you can just see it. There's my line, so I didn't have that arc right at all. And here's the other line. And then you see how I had a sharp point. So I'm glad I had this view because that, that looks like just what I want right there. And uh, everything's scaling out pretty good. Let's see. Uh, this uh, is the line of the cow. Let's see. Oh, it's pretty much right there. Okay, so I'm going to trace uh, on this. And then I'll erase my lines, and I'll have a decent representation. And, you know, it's a, kind of a neat thing here. You know, this original drawing, this off the blueprint, my guess is that was drawn back in the day when the way you drew, it was on a drafting board by hand. So now here it is, you know, 80, 100 years later, you know, we've got this digital image of that hand drawing, is my guess. And... Uh, they scaled this drawing just like I'm doing on my drafter board, drafting board. So once I found the scale, geez, it just lays right in there. So let me do a little drawing on this and let's see how it looks. I traced some lines on here and uh, you notice they're kind of rough because I just, just traced it. So now I go in with the ruler and by hand and I clean those up and make them look real nice. So the tracing doesn't have to be accurate. You just clean them up later. But uh, dang if it isn't starting to look, look pretty good. So I'm happy with that. Um, let me turn on the light because it helps a little here. So now you can see where I've, I've followed the lines. Uh, during the seat, during the cowl. And here where the hood splits. And the radiator. And then I marked the uh, axle position on the real car, just um, just to be curious. I think it's a little bit different, but that's all right. Cycle carts or cycle carts. So that light box is a nice tool to have. Um, it's pretty easy to put together. It's just some half-inch plywood or three-quarter plywood and a piece of uh, white translucent plexiglass. Uh, in the industry, we call it milk plex because it lets light bleed through. So I had some laying around so I made a box. Okay, continuing on. I was curious uh, how far the uh, the wheel moves, the front wheel, when you, uh, you know, turn the steering wheel to full lock. Um, because on the new uh, cart I'm building, the frame, you know, the body comes way out here. It's not narrow like this, it's it's way out here, you know. So in scale, 
Well, right here, there's about uh, nine inches. But on the other cart, there's only about six inches here uh, to where the tire is at rest at center. So I wanted to see how much this thing moves. So I'm just kind of eyeballing the thing up here. All right, so the center of the tire is on zero. So if I crank it over, and then I, I'm, you know, it's hard to eyeball from here, but it ends up being about six inches of travel. Now that's a, that tire is a, a full lock. So that's not good because that's all I have right there on, you know, in, on the scale drawing. So I could have the tire rubbing on the frame and then shoot, you know, gosh, that's, I got some working out to do because there's got to be a uh, wishbone here that goes from the frame to the front axle to keep it from moving forward and back. And that's got to be inside this wheel because if I have that, if I have that rod, that wishbone coming clear out here, well, it's going to hit the tire. Ah, oh, crap. Well, maybe I make the front axle just a little bit wider. I don't know. We'll see. This is why I lay it out because you come into, you come up against these problems and. You know, you could wing it and take care of it when you get there, but I like to figure out as much as I can before I start. All right, well, that was an interesting piece of knowledge. Hmm. So here's how I figured out I better go measure the cart and see what I was up against. So this drawing is, uh, let me move my French curve there, one and a half to the foot. All right, so here's my scale ruler, the one and a half to the foot. So here's the side, side of the tire and here's the body, you know, as it tapers. So, in scale, I have six and a half, almost seven inches. Three, six, six and a half, seven. So, uh, either I change the shape of this line, make it, you know, closer together, or uh, maybe I lengthen the axle just a little bit. I want an inch or two of clearance there at full lock. You know, the monocar has a nice turning radius. Hmm. All right, I think I can work that out. That's, that's the idea of this plan view. I still have to clean up these lines. But I was <clears throat> thinking about this turning radius thing here. And uh, so, all right, you'll watch me figure this one out. This will be interesting. You know, while you're building the cycle cart, there's an inordinate amount of time where you're thinking. You're just braining on it, you know, trying to figure out what the hell you're going to do. So, uh, I realized that, okay, this scale's at, uh, we're still on the one and a half. So, uh, there's one foot, two foot, six inches. So, this scale's at 30. But, I want my cart to be 28. So, I'm going to pick up a couple inches there. But, and that'll narrow everything. That'll bring this together. That'll get me a little more right here, which is good. I think on the real car, this is a wider axle, so that's not an issue. But in the cycle cart, I want the body to be 28, maybe 27. Uh, and then if you look right here, see how the tires are just right up against the body? Well, if I bring that in, an inch to an inch and a quarter, inch and a half on each side, that'll give me a little more clearance there, which I, I want. And, uh, and that'll get me where I need to be here, I believe. So, uh, it wouldn't be too hard just to narrow this thing up a little bit. So, before I committed to making this drawing, uh, you know, a lot better, I, I want to figure a few things out. So, I'm getting there. So, this is the end of the third installment, the third video in the series. So, uh... In the next one, I'll have this drawing more cleaned up. And uh, we're getting to the part now where, you know, I have to start really dialing this into the size of a cycle cart because uh, full-size cars scale differently to the cycle cart dimensions. So at some point, you got to start fudging. So that's where I'm going to narrow things up and, you know, change it around so it'll be a workable cycle cart. It won't be exactly like the real car. All right.